Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In today's video, we will be exploring conservation approaches in order to sustain biodiversity. There are two conservation approaches to the sustaining of biodiversity, the species approach and the ecosystem approach. The species approach focused on helping individual species that are threatened by taking action that is directly surrounding the conservation of that in particular species. For example, if we had a population of penguins that had a very low genetic diversity and we introduced three new male penguins into that population, that action is going to increase the potential diversity of that gene pool and uh, assist with the sustaining of that particular population. So that action only impacted that particular species. One example of a species approach would be uh, establishment of gene banks. Gene banks or seed banks will preserve genetic information and plant species in long-term cold storage. By preserving that genetic information or those seeds, we are focusing on those individual species and protecting them into the future. Another way to have a species approach would be botanical gardens. Botanical gardens are enclosed spaces that are designed to conserve and have representative members of plant species. Right now, botanical gardens contain representatives of about a third of the world's species, but unfortunately, they only have about 3% of the world's threatened species. Wildlife forms are another way that we can have a species approach to sustaining biodiversity. Wildlife farms can raise threatened species um, for commercial sale. For example, in Florida, um, there are alligator farms uh, so that they would not be overly consumed uh, in the production of uh, leather products or uh, meat products. These alligators are being raised for consumption. Um, in certain parts of Central and South America, there are butterfly farms that are uh, designed to raise butterflies for reintroduction so that um, we can kind of maintain those populations of rare and endangered butterflies. Zoos and aquarium can help protect endangered animals and follow that species approach by preserving those individuals with the long-term goal of perhaps reintroduction. For example, here we have the red wolf. The red wolf is only found in a small part of North Carolina. Their populations dwindle as a result of habitat destruction, poaching, um, accidental death, uh, result of uh, car impacts. Um, so one way that they're helping to sustain that species is through the captive breeding and reintroduction of those species into the wild. Another way that we can help species specifically is by establishing refuges and sanctuaries. Refuges and sanctuaries are designed to protect specific species that require specific habitats. In 1903, President Roosevelt established the first refuge at Pelican Island, Florida to help protect birds, in particular the brown pelican. A final species approach to sustaining biodiversity would be reconciliation or reconciliation ecology. Reconciliation ecology involves finding ways to share the places where we live with other species. For example, each year um, I'm sure there are many families across uh, the Commonwealth who are constantly at odds with white-tailed deer as they eat our uh, plants and things that we have planted. Well, one way to kind of live in balance with those deer is choosing plants that are less uh, tasteful to those deer so that we can have our, our pretty flowers and things without the deer impacting them. Um, we, you know, some folks don't appreciate having snakes around. Well, one of the things that draws snakes is the presence of like birds and uh, small rodents. So if you have a bird feeder, you know, maybe you would uh, change the feeder so that uh, the seed type that you are uh, utilizing is not uh, dropping a lot of seeds that would draw rodents and things that might bring um, snakes to your area. Um, some other ways that we can reconcile our environments so that we're more in harmony with nature would be replacing our single monoculture grasses um, with native species. Um, instead of spraying uh, pesticides, 
um, that might kill vital insects like honeybees, we might put a bat box in our um, property so that they can keep down those unwanted insects. The second type of a strategy for sustaining biodiversity is completing what's called an ecosystem approach. Here we take a direct action to protect or restore the environment. That way we're going to help to protect a particular species or multiple species. For example, if we are able to use sustainable forestry methods and reduce the demand on harvested trees, we protect crucial habitats, especially um, un untouched uh, forests so that we can establish populations of organisms that might be threatened or endangered. One example of an ecosystem approach is the establishment of parks. Countries like the United States have established more than 1,100 national parks to preserve environments, but many are threatened by human activities. Local people will invade parks for wood, cropland, and other natural resources. Loggers, miners, and wildlife poachers will also deplete natural resources illegally. The park is designed for a preservationist approach. It's there to be enjoyed for future um, generations. It's our national forest, which uh, individuals can petition to actually use those forests for their resources. Many parks are way too small to actually sustain large animal species. And so we need to find ways to maybe uh, do land trade-offs to expand the size of our parks. And a lot of our parkland has suffered damage as a result of invasive species. Um, bark beetles come in and destroy whole um, acres of forests. You might have invasive vines that might come in and choke out other native flora. Another example of an ecosystem approach would be the establishment of reserves. Most ecologists and conservation biologists believe that the best way to preserve biodiversity is to create this worldwide network of protected areas. Ecologists call for protecting more land to sustain biodiversity, but there are a lot of economic and political interests that oppose doing this. Currently, only 12% of the Earth's land area is protected, and only 5% is strictly prohibited from harmful human activities. Conservation biologists call for a full protection of at least 20% of the Earth's land area that would represent multiple examples of all biomes. The Indian tiger, for example, is at great risk for extinction, but fortunately the government entities in India have found ways to perhaps establish uh, biological reserves to help sustain um, that in Indian tiger population. Large and medium-sized reserves with buffer zones will help to protect biodiversity and can be connected by corridors. So that way um, organisms can move from one reserve to another or they, if that particular environment is being altered by something say for instance as climate change um, they can start to move to other areas um, and be more successful there. Costa Rica is a model country for the establishment of reserves. Um, it's actually uh, consolidated its reserves into eight mega reserves and it's designed to sustain 80 percent of its biodiversity. One reason Costa Rica has been able to do this is because it has discovered that its natural biodiversity is one of its greatest exports and so by having a rich ecosystem it can support a lot of ecotourism uh, drawing a lot of people to their country um, to um, help enhance their economies. A model biosphere reserve is one that is suggested that would contain a protected inner core surrounded by two buffer zones that the, the local people could use for multiple resources. Another great tool in the ecosystem approach is GIS or the Geographic Information System. Here we use a series of, of, of geographic information and other data to understand and manage ecosystems. We could identify and establish ways to connect nature reserves so that we can pre prevent fragmentation um, and encourage the establishment of, of larger organisms in the environment. Um, we could actually use GIS to design developments so that we could have the least environmental impact. We can maintain larger areas of forest or land. 
The most important thing that we need to do in terms of the ecosystem approach is to use uh, population sampling uh, and uh, GIS information to determine where we have the greatest impact on biodiversity loss and establish what we might cons consider to be hot spots, areas which are in greatest risk for uh, biodiversity loss. Here, by concentrating our efforts on these areas um, where biodiversity is under immediate threat, we might have a chance at staving off some unnecessary extinctions.